Hi guys, Alicia here, the Newbie Crafter. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a phone snuggie is what I call it with a loop de loom. I really like the loop de loom because I cannot crochet because most of the people that try and teach me how to crochet are right handed and I'm left handed so that ends not very well and no one in my family really knows how to knit. So I really like the loop de loom because that's quite friendly for me and it's really good for a beginner. So the supplies that you'll be needing to create this today are your yarns of choice. I really like the loop de loom because you can use a variety of different yarns. You can use some chunky and some thinner. You can even use some embroidery floss in it if you wanted to, to create a really neat look. So I'm using a chunky yarn, which is the in in this are the three colors that I'm using today. These two are of the same brand, and then this one right here has some really pretty silver in it. I really like to put the metallics in it when I can. You're going to be needing your phone to use to get the proper size. You're also going to be needing your loop de loom. I have two looms attached together here, but of course you can just use one loop de loom or you can use two and attach them together. You're going to need your loom sticks. This comes with your loop de loom. Your loop de loom does also come with some yarn, so you can use that for this project, but I really like to use my own yarns of choice. And you will need some scissors. So, let's get into it. So what you're going to want to do is take your loop de loom and your phone and this is the side that normally facing is normally facing me, but I'm doing it so it's facing you so it's easier for you today. You're going to want to measure out the width of your phone twice. And then you're going to want to add in two to three more pegs for the side width and making it easier to get your entire phone into the phone snuggie. So I'm going to be doing a full loom of pegs for my HTC today. So with your pegs, you're going to want to put one so it's facing forward, this little end so you can see it eating right here. And then with the next one, you're going to want to put it backwards to that so then you see the smooth side. And you're going to want to do this all the way along because we're going to be weaving the yarn in between to get our project to become a fabric. So we're going to do this all the way along however wide we want our project to be. So once we have in all of our pegs, I am going to take, again, a yarn of choice. You're going to need a thinner yarn for this, so if you're choosing to use a thick yarn, you're going to want to choose a thinner yarn that hopefully matches. That will make the process work a lot better and be a lot easier, and it will not be as easy to break your pegs. Again, if you're working with a chunky yarn, do every other peg again to prevent breaking them and do them so that they still line up so you have a smooth one and then a one that eats just so that it's a wider stitch so that you don't break your pegs. So I'm going to be using my white for the inside of mine today. The one that I, the type of yarn that I do like to use sometimes is more of a terry cloth type of yarn so that it really grabs onto the fabric so the fabric doesn't move as much. If you're doing something with rainbow colors, you can also do it in a rainbow order and use up your scraps. So I'm going to measure my phone on my pegs, and it is about a full peg tall. So I'm going to want to measure out a full peg tall, plus half of a, plus one more peg. Just I like to have a fair amount of extra, it makes it easier when doing this up. And then I double that. So I now have a fairly good size length here. And you're going to want to do as many of these lengths as you have pegs. So I have cut all of my strands to the same length. I used my really sparkly white yarn. It's so pretty. I'm going to want to take these now and fold them in half. Alright? And find the middle. Next, you're going to want to stick that in the little mouth, as I call it, of the peg. And you're going to want to do this all the way along and have all of the threads going to the same size, no matter what way the opening for the peg is, have all of your threads going to the same side, hanging off on the same side. So you're going to want to do this all the way along to all of your pegs. So I have all of these attached and going to the same side, making sure that this side is not the side where you have your little spinny knob or flicky switch both very technical names. I'm going to get all of my yarns together now and we're going to move on to the actual looming part. 
So I have all of my yarns together here and I have all of the ends gathered together. When you're doing this, you want this to be the angle that's going at. So I'm bringing this in like this. So that's the angle that I want my flicky switch to be at. Again, leaving my tail. I have a little bit much here, so I'm going to pull that down a bit. And then I'm going to flick it through the other side, getting a bit more yarn. I just have them all hanging out on the floor. And then bring it back across. Now the first few ones are hard to get it all in between, so you want this looped in between all of these. The first few ones are harder, but then they get easier because the yarn is separating it more. The thicker the yarn you use, the faster your project's going to go. So I really like to use a thick yarn when I do this. It makes things a whole lot easier. But you can use a very thin yarn and you can also do more than one of the same color together to get the project to go by faster. But you're just going to do this all the way along until this is your desire, till this is the length that you want it to be. So remember that when you're working along, you don't want to pull this too tight. You want there to be some slack along the edges because you don't want to pull that way in and have your edge pieces on an angle. If that happens, just go back and pull them a bit. Also, when you pull them in, you do make the pegs weaker and increase your chances of breaking them. I've only broken one peg, peg before, but when you break the pegs, I'm not sure where to get the refills. So when you break a peg, you're kind of out of luck. So try to avoid breaking your pegs and your loom will last a lot longer. Once you have loomed all the way up to tell it the length that you want it, in another video I'm going to show you how to make this even longer than the lengths of your peg, but for right now we're just going to leave it at this because most phones are about this tall and if you have one of those really big phones you have to wait a little bit and then I'll show you how to create um, one that's two, five, twenty peg lengths long. So we're going to be taking this off of our loom now. So what you're going to want to do is take the thread that is still attached to all of your yarn, mine is down there on the floor, and you're going to want to measure out two to two and a half peg lengths and then trim all of your working threads. And just drop that on the floor. Or wind them up if you want to. <laughs> You're going to want to pull up all your pegs a bit so they're no longer attached to your loom. So that these are all coming up. And make sure to keep the yarn all tucked in well. My last one. And then you can, we do not need this anymore, so you can set that aside. Sometimes what I like to do is safety pin this or use a paper clip to hold this in place. And I'll do that for today. So I'm just doing this for today, but this step is completely optional. It makes it a bit easier if you're just beginning, so I want to show you how to do that. But of course you can do it without it. So we have all of our little guys down here, and there's two coming from each little woven bit. And we're going to unhook our peg from the yarn and remove that. And then take your groupings of colored yarn and stick or pull that through the loop. And then since we have this really large loop right here, you're going to pull the two directly beneath it to get that nice and snug. Just like that. And you're going to do that going all the way along to all of your pegs. So again, unloop it, remove the peg, pull or insert all of your threads through, and pull the thread that's going all the way down connected to that one. So do this all the way along. So I have woven um, my length and then I have tied in all of my ends here. Now I want to loosen mine just a bit to make it a little bit longer. Not that much though because I don't want my phone snuggie to be the length for two phones and I use just one phone. So that's about good. It's going to shrink a little bit when we tie our knots in the bottom, but that's okay. So we're going to look at the bottom of this now. So as you can see, they're in little groupings of two. So what you're going to want to do is 
kind of, we'll start over here, is you can see, we're going to get nice and close here for you, these, this is the order that they're in, these two are like this. So for the N2 and one from the second one, you, you're going to want to tie those in a knot. Just a nice tight knot to hold that in place. And then with one of these singular ones, with, so now we're going to leave those two to be. So we're done with those. I'm going to choose one from here, and the next one, and tie those together again, and get these at the same height that those other ones were at, that that other knot that we just tied is at. And then you're going to grab that one again, and the next one. You're going to do this all the way along to tie your knots. This is what's going to hold your whole project in place so it doesn't fall apart, basically. So you want to make sure that you tie these knots well, because this is what's holding it all together. I like to scoop them away to the side once I've done them so that they're out of my way and I know I don't need to do anything with them anymore. And continue tying. <laughs> so when you get to the end of your project, you're going to have all of your working threads left along with one of your inner threads. So you're going to take that one inner thread and tie that together with all of your working threads. You could have five working threads or one working thread, it really doesn't matter. Just tie that with the last inner thread. Tie that nice and tight. Now I do typically work with this part facing towards me. and That does make the process easier, but I'm doing this so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to get my stitch nice and even throughout the whole thing. Just do this a bit and that'll help even it out. And then I'm going to check my phone. I like to have my just length my phone. My, this one's going to be a little bit shorter and that's how I like it so I can grab my phone easier. I really like these in the winter to help keep my phone warm in the cold because if my phone gets too cold it doesn't work as well. So what I like to do here is I like to use a crochet hook. You know, don't get scared but it's really simple on how to tie this in. So I like to use a six millimeter or a J10 crochet hook. Um, I'm definitely not a crocheter, but we have some of these because my mom used to crochet. So I like to keep my phone in it for this part. And I slide my crochet hook up a bit through some of the other side. I hook on those pieces and I pull it back down and through. So we're folding it in half and grabbing that and pulling it back down and through. All of them through. Pull it part way with your crochet hook then do rest of it with your hands and make sure to get all of the strands through and then you're gonna go up a bit on the next side or the other side. Slide that up, wrap that around and pull all of those down and through. Now you might not be able to get all of them, you may have to do it in a few parts, so in half or whatever. Sometimes I can get them all, not always. And just get those through. And you're going to want to do this all the way down the side. So I have sewn the entire side here and my phone is in the phone, in this phone snuggie. So I have all of my extra threads here at the bottom and you're going to want to choose the little grouping from the top and the little grouping from the bottom and tie the two together in just again a simple knot pretty easy we really like the knots when working with the loop de loom so then once we've done that little section going to go to the next. So the four little threads here, I'm going to tie those together. 
and this is sealing up the bottom of your phone case, phone snuggie so that your phone won't fall through. So just doing these little pairings and going to do this all the way along the bottom of my phone case. Phone snuggie. <laughs> So I have all of my little tassels here, and we're just about done, which is super exciting. But you can either cut these leaving some length, and have a little fringe at the bottom. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these fairly close to the knots. If you want to, you can apply some fray check. But I'm not too worried about that. I'm just putting my glue, cutting all the way along here. And then I'm simply going to remove my phone and turn my case inside out. Or outside, yeah, uh, the right way, we'll put it that way. So get those corners out. You'll want to give it a little stretch with your hands. It's normal for this to be very tight, but the more that you use this, the tighter the looser it'll be. So we have the dotted bottom here. It doesn't look that bad and most people aren't going to be looking at the bottom of it, but I really love the texture that you can get with the loop de loom We have the nice side here and then this is the side that we had sewed up or sewn up. The more that you do this the better you get at it. I have had my loop de loom for about a year and I haven't used it that much. I would really like to use it more so I've been trying to get into using it more because I have a lot of yarn as you can see in my craft room tour which I'll put the link to in the description box below. So I really hope that you try out this phone snuggie DIY. Please subscribe to my channel to see all kinds of other fun DIYs that I do and like this video so other people can see a fun project they can do with your loop de loom. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.